If you've ever been late to work because you woke up and your car was under several feet of snow, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, folks. Welcome back. Happy Monday. We are going to start off another week here. We have, a, I think, a slightly shortened week, so we're going to make the most of what we have. Right now, let's get it. Welcome to Benzinga Live Trading. Let's see if this actually kind of comes back. Way out of control, got way too high. All right, hey, I will take that. I will absolutely take that. All right, folks, we are back. Let's get it rolling. Happy Monday. I hope that you all had a great restful weekend. We are back to the market to make some money. I got my main man, 13, in the back. 13, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing all right. Can't complain on a Monday morning. Okay, that's good. I normally <laughs> find many reasons to complain on a Monday morning. So if we're unable to do that today, things must be working out. Okay, before we get started here, I definitely want to mention the stream is sponsored by Trade the Pool, best prop firm out there. Easy way for you to get above that 25K threshold if you need, or if you need some extended buying power for your trading account, you can get that too. Trade the Pool guys are great. They even give us plays on top of it. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here this morning, 13. We, of course, are going to start off with the SPY. Stop if you've heard me say this before, but boy, oh boy, it looks like the staircase pattern still in effect here. We continue to trade up to new highs, then we come in a little bit. It looks like that market really wants to roll over and correct, and then buyers step in once again and bring us to new highs. We're currently on the trade back phase here right now, about 519.90. What kind of levels do you see here, 13, on the SPY? Well, after uh, we've had this uh, new uh, all-time highs put in last week, uh, for a 5% pullback, that would take us down to about uh, 498. Uh, we've been talking about how uh, this market really does need a bit of uh, cooling off. I'm not looking for it to enter bear territory, but we do want to see some of it cool off and uh, maybe consolidate a bit so we can continue this uh, this bull run that we're having right now. We're in a raging bull market, and it's uh, needs to it still needs to have some cooling off uh, points. So five percent pullback would take us to uh, to that level of four ninety eight. On the way down, I anticipate we'll uh, stop and try to. Uh, uh, find some support around uh, 515.50 and 512. And after that, once we get down to there, we'll be uh, underneath the 20-day SMA and we can start talking about other levels uh, should we get down that far. Okay, and you know that 5% pullback to 498, I mean, if you just take a look at that on the chart, that looks nastier than anything we've had recently. Despite really only being a 5% pullback, it looks like that would kind of freak a lot of people out. It would also take you below the 50-day moving average if we were able to get that pullback and then close below that level. So that would be great uh, for the potential start to a pullback here. We'll see if that ends up materializing here today. Okay, uh, a couple of updates from last Last week, Friday, after the show ended, I actually was stopped out of my VKTX swing. Remember, this was in my main account. I ended up taking the three points of gain that I had. So we still made a good trade, but I, I am still stalking this. Um, I think that there is still likely another push towards the highs here, and I can always rebuy it if I need to. But at least at this point, uh, stopped out of it, booked a three-point gain. We'll be looking uh, for some more entry here. Just wanted to update you there on VKTX. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about some of the movers here today. Uh, we'll also go ahead and talk about some of the setups that we have for these stocks in Trade the Pool when the market actually opens. Got about 20 minutes here, so we should have plenty of time, 13. Let's first start here with MLGO. This is right off the movers tool. If you're using Benzinga Pro, this is going to be your top gapper here today, at least top gapper over a dollar. I don't, I don't know if there's any larger sub dollar stocks here anyway mlgo you can see we on friday we actually popped in the after hours towards about 775 this morning we almost tried to test eight couldn't quite get there and backed off but we're sitting right here at the vwap now uh, on mlgo we do have some news here we had a pr from this morning that micro ag micro algo excuse me announced a deep clustering algorithm based on multi-level feature fusion that sounds like a bunch of wor buzzwords there for me. Thirteen. What do you make of that? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I I didn't really read into what all that meant, but uh, you know, 
apparently the market likes it. And the other thing is they they just recently had a reverse split last week. That's one of the reasons it was moving uh, so much last week. Uh, they do have uh, 44.4 million shares on the float. So uh, not too difficult to move around, not the easiest either. But I think uh, the news following the reverse split is what's giving it so much movement today. Okay. Also, so by, by the way, uh, everybody's saying mm -hmm. good morning. Good morning to all y'all. Yep. Good morning to everybody. Nice to see a whole bunch of returning faces in here. Uh, Lion looks like already long MLGO, or if I'm reading this wrong, looking for a long setup, we will be too. Smoke Tuna saying MLGO, nice news, must be a $1 billion idea. Uh, so again, MLGO, this definitely on uh, deck here today. And look at that. Good morning, Becca. We got some coffee in the chat. So we got everything here. We got the people back. We got the coffee back. We got movement in the stock market. We are ready to uh I just noticed this on MLGO's uh, daily chart. They seem to be, they seem to have double bottomed uh, around uh, 370, 371. Uh, this, this, it's double bottoming that's occurred this year only, uh, this quarter. But uh, that looks like what's hap that's what's happening on, uh, from a, uh, uh, a charting standpoint, aside from the uh, other uh, metrics we just gave you. So that yeah. could be, it could be interesting. Yeah, you know what? And also looking at this daily chart 13, it looks like this pop towards eight that we almost tested here this morning. It actually looks like this is the bottom end of a consolidation area. And this was the consolidation area off that last impulse move that took us to what set almost 17 bucks. So you're right here. If we trade back up towards eight, I would actually expect to run into some resistance if we start to trade into this consolidation area. So that's something to, to keep an eye on. Now, it's worth noting that's still a dollar and a half from where we're at. So even some type of volume expansion trade here uh, into that area would still be pretty fruitful. So MLGO definitely on watch here today. Good stuff uh, on this one. Um, next, I have here CYTO. Uh, now, this big impulse move uh, in the pre-market here, this took us up to about 313. We've come back. Looks like we're having a little bit of price discovery around the VWAP, which I like. We're actually building above it. We're right just shy of three. So I am expecting a three test when the market opens here. We do have a PR. Uh, Altamira Therapeutics announces collaboration with Universelles, clever name, group on not nanoparticle delivered mRNA vaccine. So we're getting some more uh, mRNA vaccine news here. That is driving ticker CYTO to the high stock up 64% here. You got any uh, outlook here on CYTO? This news uh, hasn't hit uh it wasn't hitting when i uh was starting my list but uh, mm -hmm. now that i look at it uh got a 1.8 million uh share float uh they did a reverse split in december i uh i don't have a whole uh, lot of info on this because this one just started uh moving uh you know about 30 minutes ago so uh i, I really don't have any levels or, or anything for this i could just tell you some of those metrics that i, I usually look at initially yeah, one of, the, one of the levels that I'm going to be watching here is obviously that three level. We'll see if we get an impulse move through that right at the open. I think we easily could, especially if we stay up here right around three. But on the downside here, 260 would really like to see that hold. We do have some wicks down to about 251. So it's possible if the stock knifes, we end up going down there. But keep those levels uh, keep those levels mindful. If you're waiting for this thing to kind of shake out and we knife down to one of those levels and hold, that actually might be viable there for a, a shorter term trade. So uh, keep your eye on those. CYTO, this is definitely moving here on a PR, likely to be in play when the market opens. Actually, it looks like we're going to try to test three. Yeah, yeah, trying for three right now. So uh, I want to wait for this to settle out. So I'm not going to do any of these pre-market trades here, but uh, keep it on your list. Um, okay, next we have FLGC. And 13, we've got some news here that's likely going to affect several different cannabis yeah. names. So why don't you walk us through it? Um, looking at the chart here, we did pop by as high as 240. Now, we did lose the VWAP, but so far we've held on to two. Yeah, so uh, over the weekend, uh, there was news uh, that Germany cannabis legalization was yep. on uh, schedule as a bill clears the final hurdle. So that's uh, that's particularly good news for this company because they are a multinational uh, cannabis company. I, I don't know how many of those other uh, uh, cannabis stocks have exposure uh, to the European Union or, or, or Germany for that matter, but uh, this is probably going to move some other cannabis uh, names especially it, since we have a, you know, a big uh, economic par uh, partner that's uh, legalizing it now. So uh, that's why, you know, you see CGC uh, and probably, you know, Tilray will also be moving. Um, maybe some other uh, of those uh, names that just uh, haven't really gotten attention in a while. 
ABC uh, would be another one. Possibly. Uh, I, I can't guarantee anything with some ACB, of these. Uh, excuse me. I can't guarantee anything with some of these other ones because of uh, how FLGC has exposure uh, to to Germany. So uh, you just have to you know consider that. But uh, I think that some of these other cannabis stocks would be in play off that news. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you there. So you make a really good point about the actual exposure for FLGC specifically. But one of the things that we've seen in this cannabis sector is that when you get good news for one of them, you often get some type of reaction in some of the other stocks. Now, what 13 is telling you here is how material that news is going to be. So, for example, I would expect FLGC to hold its gains since the news is specific to that company and what that company does as opposed to CGC. Sure enough, we're seeing CGC and ACB. Um, when I just had it up here, they're leaking a little bit. So uh, we'll see if maybe there's another another move. You might actually see a divergence in some of those names, but that's what's going on there. And again, the news for FLGC may also affect some of the other cannabis tickers like CGC. CGC looks like it's trying to curl up off the bottom. Uh, we'll see uh, if we're able to get that done here. So um, Carmen saying, uh, yeah, thinking pot stocks are the play uh, of the day. It's possible. And, and, you know, we might actually see another outsized move, especially if the volume steps into it. Uh, so we'll keep an eye there on CGC and FLGC, which is has the uh, actual news catalyst itself. Uh, next on the list here is going to be FRGE. So uh, careful. I know that sounds similar to FLGC. I will likely screw this up here today. So I'm just going to apologize in advance uh, for that. But FRGE here, this is Forge Global Holdings. Uh, it looks like uh, we did pop here uh, in the after hours on Friday. It looks like we're kind of grinding up here again. We do have earnings confirmed for tomorrow after the market closes and then also the conference call. I don't see any fresh news yet. Um, what do you have here on FRGE? Yeah, they did have some news on Thursday. Uh, so it's, you know, like you're, mm -hmm. like you're saying, it's a little bit old. I don't see anything recent. Uh, you know, I'm sure somebody uh, in the chat might have... Uh, come across a filing or something that might uh, give us an uh, idea of what's moving this but they do have earnings tomorrow so possible they might be running up into uh into those because they did move uh last week as well all right um the couple more here on the list smfl this is gapping here but i didn't see any news on this so i kind of want to just pass on smfl at least for now it's worth watching um, we can come back to it if you want, but I just want to make sure I save some time. I know a lot of people are mentioning Boeing. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. that here because that's a pretty big piece of news, especially when I flip over to trade the pool and give you the setups that I'm looking for for day trades here today. Uh, but let's finish off this list here. We've got ESPR. This has been an absolute banger off of our relative volume scanner. We've traded this a number of times. We've seen a lot of action here with ticker ESPR. Got a PR here this morning. Esperion shares are trading higher after the FDA approved broad labels for next Nexlatol and next Lizette to prevent heart attacks and cardiovascular procedures, regardless of statin use. So it looks like we're getting uh, some pretty good information there. ESPR popped in the after hours on Friday, holding those gains here today. I would expect a three test on deck here today. If you get any type of expanding volume on ESPR, it's possible we break out of that. Uh, as far as a breakdown here, we're really only looking at about 50 cents. So we'd like to see some of those pre-market lows hold. If you take a look at the daily chart, here you can see we're actually working on reclaiming some of these levels from the gap down uh i think all of these might be levels if the stock runs up you might run into a little bit of sellers there or some type of resistance so kind of keep that in mind here on espr you got anything else that i didn't cover in there 13 they do have 165 million share float so this may not move as readily as some of these other ones we were mentioning earlier uh that fda approval is uh good news from but they also received mm -hmm. uh coverage uh from uh needham uh they reiterated a buy on them and gave them an eight dollar price target um so there uh, and then they also have a 11.6 uh, uh percent short interest four and a quarter days to cover so not really uh the five that we're looking for in the days to cover but still potential uh squeeze happening here don't think it's going to really uh, amount a whole lot especially with the size of the float so uh, we might not see this move a whole lot. We could, but I don't know. I don't, I'm not really uh, holding my hopes for for this to just be an absolute banger. Okay. 
Okay, there you go. Um, let's see, ticker TH here. This is Target Hospitality. It looks like uh, this is a buyout offer, so I'm really not sure how much trading action is going to be here uh, or going to be available here, but that's what's going on with ticker CH. The other two that are moving here, Lucid, right? So yep. Lucid shares are trading higher after the company announced a $1 billion investment by an affiliate for PIF. So Lucid getting another cash infusion here. That took us almost as high as 350. We've kind of come off that spot. I've said it a bunch here. The stock's been very, very difficult to own or trade. I love the car, not so much the stock. What say you here on Lucid? Yeah, it's a nice injection of uh, of investment money. Uh, One billion, uh, uh, you know, of uh, for, of investment. I don't know how foreign, uh, how much of it is foreign or, or, or otherwise, uh, but they do have a one point one billion float. And I think this, uh, if, if this does get enough uh, uh, attention. It's going to uh, likely squeeze out uh, some shorts. It has a 21.6 short interest, 8.6 days to cover. Uh, that's those are the uh, the numbers we'd like to see when we're we're looking for short squeezes. So this is uh, something I'm going to be looking at to uh, squeeze today. Uh, don't know how much because of how big the the, the float is, but uh, I, I'd maybe be looking at possibly four. So that's just something I'm, I'm looking. at. I have levels for this. The next one it needs to get to is 360. Okay, and we'll see then if we take out that pre-market high, that'll give us a good yeah. mile marker on whether or not this is working. That works for me. Uh, OCGN, this is another one. Looks like the chat is looking at this one too. This yep. is Occugen. This did trade up as high as 194. We've come back and it's doing a decent job holding the VWAP so far here on Occugen. Looks like uh, we did have some news here on Friday. Oh, no, not really. So nothing really even fresh here on OCGN. No, this is still moving off of the uh, class action lawsuit getting dismissed. Okay. Um, it also has, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, short uh, interest that uh, can be used to, uh, against it to, to move the price up. 12.32% uh, uh, short interest with nine days to cover. Pretty good. Um, but they do have a 197 uh, million shares on the float. So uh, much like uh, Lucid, I, I don't expect this to really you know be absolutely a, a screamer like or espr for that matter uh but the, the size of those uh floats uh doesn't mean that they can't move uh pretty handily but i'm, I'm not expecting like a lot of follow-through on these gotcha gotcha yeah jay here saying saudi money in lucid uh they also spent foolish money on live golf that you know the part here about foolish money um that's worth mentioning right i know it's a lot of money invested there into lucid but what does it mean well what, what's it going to do are, are they actually going to turn things around those answers i don't have the answers to that as far as the live golf thing when it, i thought they were going to merge when are we going to start getting tournaments with the best players in the world there that's really my only question when it comes to the whole live thing um, okay, um, good stuff there, 13. Let me go ahead and uh, switch over to trade the pool. I do want to show you some of the day trade setups that I have here today. Then we'll go ahead and take tickers from the chat. Um, I know a lot of people are looking at DWAC. I didn't even look at DWAC here today. Maybe I should have. Uh, I guess it's up just a little bit here in the pre-market. Let's see what happens when the market actually opens. I could, I could tell you some things on that too when you're ready. Yeah, let, let's do that here in a little bit. And, and then and then really quick here, the other one that we should mention here is going to be DKNG. I know that there were some people trading this around the uh, tournament last uh, week. Um, actually had a pretty good week last week. Looks like maybe that was a sell the news though, right? Tur the, the big part or the opening part of that tournament is now over. Um, let's see what DraftKings does here today. Just a couple of things to keep uh, note of. All right, let's go here to trade the pool and let's take a look at some of the setups. I'm actually going to do Boeing last because we want to discuss the um, we want to discuss the news item there. Um, we do have Apple. You can see uh, Apple here fell out of the range that we had last week. So one of the things that I'm going to do is kind of mark a new range here. I'm actually going to go a little bit lower. So we'll see if Apple, oops, has got to raise that a little bit. Uh, we'll see if Apple ends up uh, giving us a trade here. Um, I had a couple more here. Uh, just give me one sec. Uh, let's take a look at lucid, see if we end up getting a trade here. Here's the range that I have 318 on the bottom side, 348 on the upside. We'll see what happens when that breaks, or I'm sure one of them is going to break. We'll see which one, <laughs> uh, geo EV. This was a stock from last week. I think Carmen, you've been on this one, uh, another smaller stock here looking for the same type of setup, marking off those levels here in the pre-market. We'll see which end of this breaks. Uh, and then last is, is Mara. Uh, there's been a lot of movement here in Bitcoin. We've seen a lot of these different uh, Bitcoin names move around. Bitcoin holding pretty steady here, just north of 67K on the futures chart. 
Um, Mars chart looks very similar, just kind of holding in here. So this is what I've got. And then as far as Boeing goes, let's talk about that, and then we can hit all of the other news. So right. uh, Boeing here, here's the range that I have, upside of one uh, 197.24 downside range at 192 so we've got about a five dollar range in there now the big news here is that the ceo is stepping down at the end of the year so you guys are well aware of all of the bad boeing news door plugs blowing out <laughs> all of the stuff about the boeing planes um and now it looks like the ceo is stepping down now 13 i've got this range carved out so i'm ready for a trade here today but what do you make of the ceo not stepping down for the rest of the year well, they need to find somebody to replace him first. Uh, right. I think it's just, uh, you know, they just need to iron out some of the management changes if, the, if that's what's going to happen. Uh, other than that, um, I don't know what other, dis, uh, you know, company decisions he's, you know, going to be making in between that time. Uh, hopefully it's not uh, uh, in the QA department. Um, <laughs> Good point. But, uh, you know, for me, uh, I would want to see this, uh, if, if we're going to see continued upside, I want to see it get through the consolidation that we've been putting in uh, since the beginning of the year. Uh, we'll come right up to that. Uh, and that's going to last from about, uh, you know, where, about where we are all the way up to about 212, 213. Uh, and we need to get through the 50 day SMA uh, up and then up to the 200 day SMA in order to, uh, to break those levels. So, a lot of uh, resistance levels to get through. I, mm -hmm. I don't know how long or short lived this is going to be uh, because, well, you know, it's, it's nine months away. A lot of things can happen in that nine months. Yeah. So, indeed. Uh, this this is initially uh, welcome news because uh, apparently nobody's happy with the CEO and I, for good reason. So it really depends on uh, how how high this goes will really depend on what they uh, end up replacing it with. Maybe CEO dot uh, AI. So, <laughs> how would you feel about that if you had an ai ceo at boeing i don't know i don't know, <laughs> I, I don't know if that's actually the right answer that actually might give us another down move uh, yeah. for us to trade here so we'll see uh on that one um richard mentioning here boeing ceo may want credit for turning shop around so we're in terms of you know why would he want to stay around till the end of the year still a whole bunch of months well maybe to try and take a little bit of credit for turning that around that's an interesting mm -hmm. point uh, Richard, we shall see. Uh, okay, watching VKTX uh, trade up here in the pre-market. Bummer that I was stopped out of that on Friday, but that's okay. We still will move along with gains being booked. Um, okay, um, so let's go back. You said you had something here on DWAC. Let's talk about that. What did you have? Uh, so Trump has until uh, today to come up with the uh, uh, a, a bond or, or the cash to uh, uh, pay that uh, settlement from the uh, – uh, real estate, uh, real estate fraud case that uh, that he's uh, involved with, and the thought here is that if because they're merging today, uh, DWAC, uh, that if he needs to raise the cash, he's going to sell his shares. That would be very bad for the company. Uh, that'd be very bad for 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 DWAC and you know whatever ends up uh, changing to. I think it's DJT is what it's going to end up being. Uh, so that that ha I think that has some pretty uh, substantial downside risk. Uh, if he needs to raise that cash and he's probably going to end up hurting a lot of shareholders uh, who are in, invested in his company if he ends up trying to sell out right as it merges. So that's that's the big concern there with that one. I'm just going to be staying away from it because I don't know what's going to happen with him. Yeah. OK, uh, fair enough. We've seen this one be an absolute rocket before. I'd like to hear for you from all of you day traders. What are you doing here with DWAC? Looks like we're getting a little push here out of the pre-market. We'll see what happens as this trades up to about 45 on DWAC. Okay, we are almost there for the open. Got just under a minute here. We're gonna take a look and see what type of setups we get here. Looks like Lucid actually breaking onto the bottom of that. Let's see if we yep. get a back test here on Lucid. VKTX looking like it's trying to take 71 here on VKTX, continuing to trade up here. Let's see here, we, we have... have uh, the market about to open in uh, 30, seconds. 30 seconds. Oh, and that, so that's the other thing. So you were saying that Easter's on the weekend this this year, 13. So the market well, it's on is Easter closed. Sunday. So, right. I'm sorry. So the market is closed on Good Friday in observance. So th yeah. that's why we have a short week here, only a four-day trading week. Yes. So keep that in mind as we and, get closer to the end of the week. And what's interesting is that we're still going to get the uh, PCE report that day. So the market will be closed when we get that. So I think uh, depending on how that looks, we'll see the reaction to the market on Monday. And we're open. 
We are open, folks. Let's get it done. Okay, Lou said first move here down out mm -hmm. of that uh, area. Yeah, might Matt, uh, come I'm down actually to actually going to flip through a couple of these until we find a good setup. Mara still holding in that channel. FLGC, not a whole lot of movement yet. We'll see if that picks up here. CYTO was another one of those gappers we had this morning. That's moving higher here. FLGC uh, going down. MLGO is trying to hang in there. Nope, that's going down. See if we can get wait out some of these pullbacks out of the open. <laughs> Just might have to wait out some of the yeah OCG. Hey, and I also got, the hey, I got. Look, it's it's early on a Monday. I definitely <laughs> got time. Yep. I definitely got time. MLGO continuing to move down here. Uh, FLGC is holding the 65 EMA on the five minute, but let's see if it can continue to do that. MLGO, little bit of buyers here. Let me flip through more of those channel trades here. Lucid continuing to move down here. We'll see if we get a back test of that 318. All selling volume on Lucid here so far. Yeah, I think it wants to try to uh, get down to three where there's some, there could be some more buyers. Yeah, and FRGE up to that pre-market high now on FRGE. Let's see if it stops right here on FRGE. TH, another one that we mentioned really quickly. Uh, we kind of just glossed over it here. This was that buyout. This actually popped out of the gate. OCGN was another one that we mentioned earlier. OCGN Lynn's, holding in here above VWAP. Sorry, 13. That's all right. Lynn's uh, yelling at us about uh, Tesla. <laughs> always. Tesla's always moving. Right through uh, one of those areas that we had here at 171. Looks like 172 the next one. We'll see if Tesla stops there. Might, might actually give us a regression to the mean here. By the way, Lulu from last week continuing to trade down here. That short was absolute money. That continuing here on Lulu. We'll see if it actually breaks the lows from Friday. I had those. Let me get you that exact value there. 187 on that one. Oh, Tesla just ripping out of the gate now. Let's go, Tesla. <laughs> Mizuho downgraded the stock from buy to neutral. Time to rip. Time to rip, baby. Rip to the upside. How's CCJ doing? I know Atlas mentioned that one earlier here. CCJ holding in there. Still long that in the swing. That rocking. VKTX still doing well. I got shaken out of that on Friday. Bummer. It's okay, though. Gains are booked. This still, I think, a move back towards 100 possible here on VKTX. OCGN popping up on my scanner again. Looks like that knifed and got bought right back. Watch this on OCGN if this can actually take out this high here. 187. Let's see what Lucid ended up doing here. Let's see if Lucid bounces back to that 318 level. Lucid with the, yeah, it's it's bounced off the 65 EMA on the five minutes. So there's, uh, it's got to get back over 315 though. Apple falling out of that consolidation area here. Apple at lows, Netflix at lows. Tesla really bucking that trend there. Amazon also selling off as well. What is that doing for the spy? We were underneath 520 this morning. We're back above it. I would love to get a back test of this 171 level on Apple. That would be awesome. HYLN, I feel like we've seen that one before, that getting a mention here. OCGN is turning green. Yeah, the buyers really stepped in there and bought that. Right above the VWAP was the move there, OCGN. Just looking around at something. Oh, it looks I like saw Sundial. I saw Sundial on my scanner. That's another one of those pot names here. That popping out of the gate. Let's see how some of those pot names did. CGC continued move down. Good call on that. FLGC was the one with actual exposure here. That. Yeah also moving down and away from its VWAP, so clearly using the, that VWAP as resistance here. DWAC, that pre-market pop got sold off right back down to where it started, and it's holding at least so far. We'll see if that firms up here. 
MBRX I see moving a little bit. The scanner, oh, that's not really doing a whole lot. CYTO, this still moving here towards the highs. Some size here at 340. We'll see if that 340 block gets hit. Uh, Reddit looks like it has, uh, it's trying to get through some of, uh, last week's consolidation on Friday. So what do you think on Reddit? You think we get a bounce and an upside trade here? Or you think this eventually just rolls over? Um, well, I don't think I've got enough, uh, data to really. Yeah. I, I just kind of a gut feeling here. NKTX being mentioned by tuna. Good call here. Tuna, this curling up off the bottom, by the way, that 13, this could really kind of trade back for, or back to in terms of a range for resistance. CYTO still pushing higher here out of the gate. FLGC lower. Lucid right back to this level. Let's see what Lucid can do. Oh, well, yeah, it's uh, breaking through that 315. I want it to, so let's see if it gets rejected here at the view app, and then maybe we can try shorten some of this. Let's see if this play works on some of these smaller names here. I have no, size no. above right here, starting at 320 up to 325. Yeah, it needs to get a close over the 315 uh, level that I was talking about. It's trying to do that at the moment. Uh, and then after that, the next level that I have is uh, 360. But like you said, it needs to get through those uh, other uh, consolidation. Yeah, uh, this I'm thinking of maybe shorting on one of these pushes here. Crow saying uh, very. Is it being very good this morning? Probably not. No, it is. It's doing quite well. This actually did pop off that the top end there on Friday. Mm -hmm. So very continuing here. And actually looking at the daily here, the next spot I would have here at about six bucks, just over six bucks here. So we'll see here on very. All right, let me going back to Lucid here. Let's see if this trade ends up setting up here. They're holding here. I'm actually going to take some short here. If it pops above this VWAP, I'm just going to end up closing this one out. So short here at 317. If we get above that 329, let me put that stop in so I can actually change away from this. Give me one sec here. 327 has got that size. 329 going to be that stop. We'll see if we pop up there on Lucid. I'd like to see this move back down towards three. OCGN is looking interesting because it's uh, trying Perfect. to uh, break through. It's a uh, 194 uh, pre-market high. Let's see if it can actually get through that pre-market high right here. Did you see any prints at 194? I do see some more size above at 199 and two. Uh, let me see what I got here. I Lucid is trying. Oh, oh, yeah, it's trying to go higher here, trying to push up higher here. Where is Micron at after yesterday? Oh, come on. It's still ripping. Come on, trade the pool. And speaking of ripping, we got a uh, break on Lucid. It's trying to get uh, trying to go further. Still has some consolidation in pre-market trying to get through, but uh, look at Micron. There we go. Yeah, so my stop's going to be at 329. We'll see if I get taken out there. That would stop out small. Let me see if uh, my Micron chart can resolve. Here we go. Wow, right through that 113. You know, you were bullish on Micron when we were talking about oh, yeah. this before. It's Micron, fine. yep, and, and this, this looking good here. That was a great call, 13. I, I appreciate that. I don't think I was... The one making that call, I just was. Uh, I think I was just kind of reinforcing. It. Hey, you've been bullish on Micron for a while. Okay, you've been bullish on Micron since we were trading that in the seventies. Yeah, and it's just that the, uh, the you know, because Nvidia is like only a component to these new AI servers uh, that are being used for uh, you know Amazon's cloud and Azure's cloud and all the different companies that have uh, you know AI uh, clouds, and Micron is going to be another big component to those uh, servers. Uh, so I think that this has, you know, they could have a lot of fuel, especially when they're talking about having uh, multi-year, uh, you know, gains from uh, the, the AI uh, server plays. So I think there's a, there's probably going to end up being a lot more. And if there's a decent sized pullback where we fill that gap from about, uh, what is it, 107 to about 96, 97, uh, I think I'll probably take a look at that as a, a good entry point. But we'll and 
And, you know, to your point about the market or tech kind of trading up and really not knowing when that's going to end, Micron mm-hmm. absolutely going to participate in that as well. Uh, Lion here mentioning FedEx short. We talked about this as oh, yeah. a setup on Friday. We actually got the motion that we were looking for. Didn't quite test that level. Now, it didn't get that extended move the rest of the day, but perhaps we take another leg down here today on FedEx. This is ticker FDX. Let's see if this ends up rolling over. If it does, this could also be pretty good on the short side. That's what uh, that's what their share buyback program was uh, yep. going to end up doing. Now, one thing that uh, I was... I was uh, having a conversation uh, on Friday that's interesting about uh, these uh, buybacks, that could also be an indication that uh, they could be buying relatively soon because they think their price, stock price is going higher. Right. In this, but in, in, as with how extended this market is, I don't really believe that's going to be the case with most of the companies uh, out there right now. Maybe in tech, maybe, uh, especially with, you know, a company like, you know, NVIDIA or some uh, my, uh, super uh, micro, but uh FedEx with how how much it's run, I, I think it's got to come in. Yeah, and that would I think that would actually be really healthy. And like I said, it's not just because I'm kind of already in that camp. Lucid, by the way, this did not clear out that stop, so it did not actually take up that consolidation area from the pre market back down at VWAP. We just lost it. Let's see if we go green here on Lucid. Looking here, we still have some size above at 325. So if a buy spikes it into that area and we take that out, this likely goes higher. I'll stop out at 329 if that works here on Lucid. Looks like FLGC is trying to recover. Doesn't look like it really has the volume to do so. So we'll have to see what happens there. I'm not not too enthusiastic about that one at the moment. Uh, MLGO trying to find the bottom. Occugen reversed. Occugen. Okay, that's the one we wanted to take a look at here. I was wondering if that one was going to run here today. Occugen right off that resistance area back down to the VWAP. Look at Lucid. It's trying to break through that uh, consolidation gonna, from this morning. It's going to stop me out here at 329. 329, 330 have that more size here. <laughs> Stacked above. Uh, getting a mention from Parker Sneaker Swim about Ehang. EH. This mm-hmm. is also one that we were able to get, nail off the scanner there. Is there news on EH? I'm going to look that up because if there is, I'd expect Joby and Archer to, to be moving as well. Archer's moving pretty well this morning too, by the way. NKTX here. This was from a tuna call from earlier. That moving up here. And Tesla. So, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, this is from Friday. Never mind. I don't see any news today. All right. Tesla here holding above that 173 and a half. Let's see if this breaks back in or pushes again on Tesla. 330 on, uh, excuse me, on Lucid is uh, providing some pretty stiff resistance. And if uh, volume starts to increase there, we could see this uh, explode up to about 340, 339 stopped out of lucid so that ended up uh going higher here stopped out of that short let's see now 348 yep. going to be that next level up and it's trying oh she trying oh she trying apple continuing to leak here 169 coming on apple i think 168 was another level that we had i know some of those longer term levels that you were talking about 165 and 160 I, I heard about somebody, I think maybe somebody from this chat uh, picked up at 168 before we had that run yep. back up to the uh, mid to high 170s. If they sold on that run, hey, congratulations, you uh, you made some money there. ESPR, that first move was down here. It looks like that bottomed out here. I got that at 230, what, 231 bottom end there. This was right back to about where we closed last week on ESPR. Okay, Lucid coming back in. Uh, not sure if it needs to reload or if it might be uh, might be done for the moment. Looking for it to uh, continue to hold above 315, uh, which is about where my view app is on this. So if it uh, starts to break down from there, we uh, yeah. probably would have to be looking at maybe under three for it to uh, find the bottom. Let me go back to uh, let me go back to Pro here while we hammer out some of those eight issues. Uh, FLGC. Uh, Interesting level, 175. Let's see uh, if we can get uh, some support there. That's that's where I would uh, be looking to. I'm not going to try this, but 
175 looks like it'd be a, a level of support where you could add for a bounce. I don't know how good that bounce will be. You know, take your uh, take your own precautions. Lucid, actually, this might be stopping here at about 3:30. Coming back into VWAP. Let's see what happens at VWAP. That's going to be one of the bigger things here. FRGE, this immediately sold that spike. ESPR trying to curl. We're also getting a mention of SGMT. Take a look at ESPR here. I'll take a look at SGMT. That actually right through the highs here, 542. SGMT. Okay. So ESPR did uh, it found support at about 231. Trying to come back up to VWAP. Uh, it still looks like uh, Lucid's trying to make a, a, a break over one, I'm sorry, 330. Here we go. Problem. I got uh, I got the uh, feed hammered out here on Lucid. This, you know, what I'm what I like here on this trading action. I know we tried to short this here on on this uh, setup that we've been looking at, but what I like here is this is actually kind of building above this 318, which is mm -hmm. also building above the VWAP. The more that we kind of consolidate in here without breaking down i think we do have a chance at that 348 level mm -hmm. 330 has the size 330 and 335 uh have the size on my end here all right so mlgo i want to see if we can get uh, some support about somewhere between 510 and 515 uh if we don't let's, then, yeah let's then it'll probably go under five I was going to say 450 could also be this support right here. Super micro is the SMCI. What's happening there, Robert? Ripping on SMCI up what 44 points here. Wow. Ryan, I, I got yours and Tim's email. Uh, and I Yeah, you see that? That Linus mm -hmm. Tech. I, that was the first time I've actually seen Linus Tech Tips review an SMCI product. That was wild. I've, I've, they, that was one of their better videos that they've yeah. done. And yeah. uh, I think for me, the big star of that video wasn't uh, Super Micro's uh, servers. It was the software they were showing on there. That software is amazing. Okay. And it's not, it's not, uh, and I, I, I responded to the email with, uh, with some uh, information on those two companies that, uh, for their software, but they're, they're private, but they're looking for, uh, they're, they're getting investment. So anyway, oh, look at uh, Occugen is trying to uh, go back up to 195 and, break that again or try to break that again lucid still not having a good time with that 330 nope but it's not done trying i th have to think mlgo might uh, get some support pretty soon here at, probably right about at this level let me bring that up here real quick we got the 200 uh, EMA on the five minute right there. So it'd be interesting to see if we can get a bounce here. And I'm got, I got my uh, pro looks good here today, but I'm having some data feed issues with uh, trade the pool. So I'm going to stick with pro at least for the time being. <laughs> Crow is trading root. I mean, that's been one of the biggest movers. It's been one of the biggest squeezers. And it looks like it's going to try to do it some more see if we end up popping this 56 level We've got 60 there on the daily let me mark off some of my uh there we go all right so spy finally went back under 520 again let's see if it can keep on with that downside i'd like to see a corrective move that'd be great for uh you know entries to go long on certain things we've been talking yes, about sir i sure would all right, now it looks uh, looks as if Lucid's trying to take another shot at 3.30. There's a lot of shares to be bought in order to push through all that yep. uh, those sell orders. They're working on it, though. They're working mm -hmm. on both of those blocks right now. MLGO could not uh, get that bounce, and we are headed lower, folks. Yep, that thing. Let me tell you, I'm glad that wasn't my top target for today. I'd be all bummed out. Yeah, I think so that it for, just didn't. It just did nothing but move down. Well, so, so much for that algorithmic announcement. Yeah, CYTO, this moving lower, KTX, that holding up here it might be moving higher. Lucid, that's still holding in this area. You know, I wonder if this is going to break down and if this was the reshort area, not the stop out area. 
possibly. I mean, mm. those wicks are not looking great. No, they're not. And and of course, it, it might just surprise us all and just absolutely rip. <laughs> We've seen that before. It uh, looks like FLGC is trying to find a bottom. Uh, it's right at the 200 uh, EMA on the five minute. Uh, MLGOs didn't hold up, so not sure if FLGCs will. Let me flip over to that. Ocugen, FLGC. Ocugen is still trying to push uh, back up to 195 for a, a break over that level. Got a lot of resistance to get through. Um, hey, Parker, it could totally bounce. I, I agree. Look, Apple, nice clean bounce off that 169 area. All right. Lucid, I think, with the last try here. And if it doesn't break, it's probably going to break down. That is that is quite the level it's trying to and get. And this is, there. yeah, this is actually the start of a new three minute candle here. So two minutes and 48 seconds left on this three minute candle. We'll see here on Lucid. A lot of size right here. It's coming in beneath. There we go. They're taking some of it. There it goes. Look oh. at that. That just got chomped. Let's go. All right. Here at some of the other stuff. Tesla coming back in, it looks like. Okay. CVNA. It's been a while since we took a look at Carvana. That popping here. Wow. Carvana. Do remember when remember when Sanjay from Happy Hour said Carvana to 100 in the future? And we were like, wow, that'd be crazy. Look at this stock. $90 right now. Oh man. I want, we should have asked him about root. <laughs> mm. Take a look at Lulu discontinuing its breakdown from last week. What a short that was. Oh. Reddit Great. starting to go. This one's going to be volatile. Still hands off for me on Reddit. You guys have fun trading that. That's not for me, but hey, yeah. you guys can trade it. More power to you. Get those gains. And FLGC slow moving, trying to bounce, but I just don't have confidence in in this one with the with the low volume. Looks like Ocugen is a tr is about to attempt that break over one ninety five. Let's take a look here at OCGN. Looks like the feed issue has firmed up. VKTX, you still long crow? I was stopped out on Friday on that one. This looking good though. VKTX might actually add this on a pullback. ESPR had a nice bounce off of 231. Bitcoin popping to the highs here, 67,700. Looks like Mara doing the same thing here. CLSK and MSTR and Riot all should be looking good. Oh, yeah. CLSK looking great. Yep. Gotten, I've got missing candles here. I'm going to flip back over to Pro. We'll run through these here. I don't actually see CLSK on the scanner at the moment, but it was. Uh, it's about, oh, up yeah. about nine and a half percent, but it should be uh, should be hitting your scanner pretty soon. G oh man, GME on my relative volume scanner. How about that? <laughs> oh, is Reddit bringing him back? Well, I mean, it's running out of the gate here. AMC is up two and a half percent. BlackBerry is up almost two percent. I'm not saying they're coming back, but it looks like they're coming back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not saying, but I'm kind of saying. Yeah. Oh. You know, I'm not sure about Ocugen, but we've seen it before. The more times it hammers a certain level, the more likely it is to, to get through it. Uh, if the volume still, you know, hangs in there. It's, it's looking okay. Not sure we'll get that break, but I'm thinking, sorry, go ahead. You no, know, I was just saying. I was. I'm sorry. I was still looking at CLSK here. This move is is huge. But you're right. This OCGM move. We're right here. 195 is is that spot. Yeah, just a big float. So you know, not not really easy to to move this around like these other ones. What is about to happen here? Reddit looks like it's about to break. 
uh, the, the Hyatt put in this morning. Um, <laughs> Le, Le Captain, Le oh, Captain okay. saying uh, earnings tonight for GME. I thought that was tomorrow. Ah. Is that tonight? Yeah, it's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Confirmed for March 26th after the close. So close enough. Uh, maybe a pre-earnings little bit of a pop here. OCGN with a new high, but it I don't know how high it's going to go. It, the volume just isn't great. There it is. It did pop that. See, this yeah. is what I mean about those upside breaks, though. It haven't been great. Yeah. Not like CLSK. I mean, this thing has just been huge rip. Well, I appreciate that, Miles. I think I had it a little bit higher than that, but uh, I appreciate that. Lucid still wants to go higher, but these wicks, these upper shadows just don't look great. Like, they, like at any moment, it's just going to, you know, pull the rug out of everybody's, uh, from underneath everybody. It feels heavy is kind of what, yeah. And FLGC, by the way, this down to that pre-market area. Let's see if it bounces from here, FLGC. MLGO being mentioned. That level that rolling I over here, yikes. Yeah, the level that I was looking for it to get over the 200 EMA, it, it went right through and found some support underneath it. Now it's trying to get back above that and not succeeding. That's so I'm a little bit concerned with MLGO coming back up here. It needs that it needs some more volume. This is a 44 million share float uh, stock. Okay, it looks like a lot of things are starting to top out. I mean, look at CLSK. That's that's putting in a an ugly candle in the, in the process of putting in an ugly candle. Um, our happy hour group would appreciate this, but I've got some breaking news for you, 13. Are you ready? What's that? Alicia, one of our market predictors, is going on vacation. Surprise ah. vacation. Okay, so something big is going to happen soon. I'm just saying that's been the pattern. I'm just alerting you to the pattern. Uh, yeah. She did ask me to wish everyone luck this week for her. Uh, so yeah. I will absolutely do that. Felicia wishes all of you luck. Folks, her uh, her going on vacation has been a reliable uh, indicator. indicator. Of, it yeah. has been a reliable <laughs> indicator for sure. So for we, sure. Uh, we'd we like to talk in jest a little bit, but at the same time, we really do have our eyes peeled on, on the news when she leaves because things do happen for some weird reason when she steps away. And it's not as if she even does poorly. She capitalizes no. on it. And she's just not there to discuss it with us. CYTO <laughs> here that is coming up off that recent bottom. FRGE still holding that area. OCGN still holding that upside area. And MLGO still holding five. Yeah, Market Sniper here saying, I've been using the three-minute candle. I think I like it more than the one-minute candle. So Market Sniper... Um, I had never used a three minute candle until smoke tuna talked about his strategy here. And I'll be honest, the more I use the three minute, the more I like it. Now I will say that I use it in conjunction with that one minute candle. So I still use the one minute candles, but I agree that three minute gives you, um, more of an insight with less of the head fakes. I would say just because it's a little bit longer, but still not quite as long as that five minute which I feel like is a is a very highly used time frame. I really like that three minute. I really like that three minute. Looks like uh, GRWG still at the highs here. Looks like uh, Ocugen is still you know hanging in there. ESPR got up. To, uh, oh, I don't know about ESPR. I think maybe it's a uh, it's not going to get back above. Uh, 265. I'll just wait and see. It's not, it's, it's looking like it's starting to, uh, Ooh, Nvidia you know, turn around. Sorry. I'm, I just saw some Nvidia calls come across here. Nvidia is just ripping right out of the gate. That along with SMCI, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, those both ripping out of the open here. Or GE, OCGN. Reddit put in a high uh, day a day high of uh, forty eight nineteen and came back in. I think uh, you're going to want to look at uh, VWAP for support. See, 
Do I have these now? I'm still missing. Let's see if I can fill in any of these historical ones. Tesla. Tesla looking good here. That's coming back into that 170 area. Tesla's got to settle at one of these areas. CYTO being mentioned again. APLD. Another former winner. That's coming up here a little bit. All right. Lucid trying over. again. You're still holding in that area there on Lucid. GME, by the way, that came back in here to the VWAP on GME. So we'll see if that gets rolling here again. Oh, EKS, that's interesting. Uh, Nelson Peltz withholding votes for... Yeah, so... That battle there is going to be nuts. Yeah, it already is. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's quite interesting. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know if he'll be, uh, if he'll be gone soon. I, what do you think? Do you think uh, his removal and replacement is, is going to be good for Disney? I think that doesn't this, it was kind of like we were discussing with Boeing, right? Like it's, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, it depend on who you get. Yeah. Because wasn't like when Iger left, they were talking about how they just wanted him back and he was going to be able to fix all these problems. And now he's back and there's a whole set. I don't know. I guess it really just depends on who you get, right? If you're going to, if you're going to fire someone with a huge name, who you replace that person with matters quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I don't know. You tell me. Well, let's see. This would be uh, the th what are the third shuffle of uh, of the top leadership in the company in in, in four years. Am I, am I, is that about right, or is it five? Anyway, I think so. Um, it's interesting how uh, Iger's uh, successor didn't you know couldn't do the job. Iger comes back. Yeah. It doesn't look like he's really able to to you know pick up the pieces. So I'm just kind of you know wondering who's going to be able to step in there and and you know appease that board and at the same time uh, you know make Disney uh, you know take it back to the the, the pre pandemic days. Uh, since the pandemic it seems like it's just gone straight downhill. Yeah, and I I agree with that. Crow here saying if you see their plans on Star Wars, it's a total disaster. Oh, yeah. How much do you think that factors into it? Well, I mean, you know, you, you acquire these uh, beloved franchises and you just go on to destroy them with yeah. uh, with with different things that they like to inject into uh, into their movies these days. It's it's not great for the brand. It's going to turn a lot of people away. So DWAC popping back to the VWAP here. XTLB, another one being mentioned here by the chatters. That popping through the VWAP, that almost back towards the highs here. I've got that high at 481 XTLB. Yeah, I do agree with that too, EKS. They, they do need to spin off the ESPN. I don't think that's been working out for them the way that they yeah. hoped. No, it, it hasn't. Uh, Lucid now finally breaking down a bit here uh, after being unsuccessful at closing above uh, 330. So maybe that was the reload short area. I think you're right. Well, we'll see. It's got to break down here. It's really got to come back in. That 318 definitely going to play a key level there on that. XCM looks like a more Ooh, of a DXCM broader market running pull. away here as well. Kind of looks like the the you know a lot of these are just kind of pulling right now. Look at AMTX. Micron continuing to push higher here on Micron. Here is AMTX. This is just riding that VWAP up here mm -hmm. today. Low volume, but looking good in the price action there. Yeah, just kind of looking to see how how much uh, room this is going to go or run. You know, I, I don't even know what AMTX I just is. I just have it on my uh, that list was, from last week. I'm pretty yeah. I'm pretty sure Tuna talked about that one last week. AMTX. Um, thoughts, Kevin? Here, thoughts on coin at these levels here for a short. So, real quick here, I I suppose it depends on what you feel here about Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin's got the momentum here. I would not be short on coin unless it was, you know, like a technical move for a day trade here. But here's what you're looking at. This is top end of that range here. Um, this candle, the exact high here, I've got this at 276. So maybe a 275 break here on coin. This actually looks pretty good. This is going to do, this is going to move with Bitcoin though, Kevin. So I suppose if you think Bitcoin is in for a pullback here, you're at a pretty decent resistance area. I like Bitcoin higher. 
Um, so I'd be looking for coin to maybe break out of this. Yeah, for me, that uh, that pattern looks pretty good for more upside. The, yeah. thing, the thing that I'm, I'm concerned with, uh, to his point, uh, if you look at back on Thursday, it tried to break out of, uh, out of this pattern and it got rejected and came back in. Yep. So this is this is where we want to see uh, it break. Because if it doesn't br uh, break and go higher here, then I could see this coming down and, and retesting the 20 day SMA, maybe even lower. The good news here is that that pullback that you were talking about, obviously a much higher low here. This still has some strength to the upside, Kevin. Um, one of the things that you could do here is you can actually kind of wait for this to confirm one of the down moves. So instead of shorting it right here, uh, wait and see what happens. Maybe it pushes above that level and then comes back in. Maybe you can confirm a downside trend there for that. But I think that a lot of this is going to have to do with Bitcoin and coin. Let me go back to trade the pool here. Good stuff, though, Kevin. Reddit's you guys get... mentioning Reddit at 50? Yeah. Here we yeah. go. Looks like Look Lucid. at that move. Looks like Lucid's uh, breaking down some more, coming down to that 315 level we were talking about earlier. This, is, this was support uh, in pre-market. So uh, this is an interesting level. If we break down from here, then I think we're going to uh, go back down to $3, maybe even 3 I'm sorry, 289 uh, 290 on which ticker lucid that's if we break down from 315 Elson. real quickly here parker nice uh entry there on reddit 4650 so to several points here here we go on lucid this is that rollover so look at that 13 that wasn't the area to stop instead that was the area to reshort and actually didn't we have that recently on a tesla that tesla short it kind of popped back into that area and then rolled back over yeah, so right here, this one moving to the downside here. Lucid, this downside move accelerating. I would look for a potential bounce here at three, but again, yeah. if you're short from this move down, I definitely book some of those gains there. Good calls, guys. Good calls. Good stuff. Man, ESPR, ever since it uh, put in that 231 uh, bottom uh, about uh, half an hour ago, it's it's been on a, a nice little move back up. We're, we're trying to get back above the 65 EMA on the five minute right now that I have about 265, and then uh, it'll just be the consolidation from uh, this morning that it's got. Again, get I'm sorry, man, I missed the ticker. Which ticker? This is uh, ESPR. ESPR. This is the one that had the FDA approval yep, and yep, got you. Mm -hmm. Looks like uh, Clean, uh, Clean Spark is pushing higher. New intraday highs. Jay mentioning Lunar, trading up here on some call buying on Lunar. It's right at that 660 level. Let's zoom out here a little bit on Lunar. It's actually been good the last couple of days. They have news. Lunar, let me check. Mm -hmm. check if they had. I don't think they had anything this morning, but maybe they did. They had Nothing. Coverage. They had coverage yeah, on Cantor. Friday. Canter. That was just from Friday, though. Yeah, I don't see anything in here. Pretty good. Pretty decent earnings. Jane, way to keep your losses small. At least you gave it a shot. Just looking through these tickers. Actually, Lucid looks like it's trying to bounce here. It, it kind of does. Uh, I still think that it might have some, some more downside, but, you know. I could be wrong about that. NVIDIA, indeed, that is rocking it, rocketing here. Same with SMCI's things absolutely ripping here today. That's interesting because with Intel and AMD, there was news over the weekend about how yep. China was restricting uh, them from being in uh, anything government related. So yep. I thought that was uh, going to be some downside that we would have in, in AMD and Intel this morning. Not so much, it seems. And even Intel here up off those pre-market lows. So mm -hmm. I know we had a couple of people that were talking about potential shorts last week on Intel for a short side swing. Uh, Intel getting that down move here. But the buyer's taking it up off the lows here. We'll see where this closes on Intel. Oh, nice all time. And great job, uh, Sally. Well, also, we have uh, OCGN uh, trying to take out that 195 level again. It really wants to get to two. Yeah, it sure does. It's going to bang on that most of the day. Until everybody gets tired of seeing it bang on that all day and say, okay, I'm done with this one. And it just has a huge dump. Reddit huge 51s, dump. by the way, Reddit 51. So we're actually above this consolidation area. Let's see if we make a run towards the top end of that wick here on Reddit. Guys are killing it with Reddit. Yeah, you guys really are. All right. So Lucid going lower. 
I, I still think we it, it's going to probably find some support around three dollars, but I don't know if that's going to be where it reverses. I'd also uh, mark off uh, two ninety two eighty eight as an as a potential uh, support level as well. NKTX here. Tuna's mentioning NKTX. Maybe we move through this consolidation area on NKTX. Going long on Lunar, says uh, Lion Atlas. That uh, is trying to get over the level I have here of uh, 660. Uh, broke over it uh, about five minutes ago, but could not close over it. Now it's testing it again. If we get uh, through that, the next level I have is 750. Holds this VWAP here. This might actually gear for another push above those highs. Okay, so Lucid, wow. Lucid really, really had a sharp move down uh, through that level that I was talking about, um, $3. And it seems to have found some support temporarily at 296, which was close to the last time it was uh, down here at the open. See if it can reverse here. If not, then I still think uh, 288 to 290 is a, a zone uh, that it's going to probably bounce at. MLGO might be trying to come off the bottom here. We'll see if it's got the strength to do that. To your point here on Lucid, here we go. This looks like this is going to retest three. I think if it loses it, we get some more downside. This is what I was hoping for on my trade earlier. So just shaking out of that a little bit. Maybe should have stayed in there. Um, maybe should have just stayed in there and added there. Looks like this didn't really get back up towards the highs. Interesting here on Lucid. I'll bank that for the next setup. Bank that one for the next setup here. Let's see if that pulls beneath three. CLSK going higher. Oh. Amazon ripping to the highs as well. Did we get any news on Amazon? Yeah, CLSK just continuing to push those highs. Let me check on Amazon here. Nope, just mm -hmm. nice little reversal right out of the open there in Amazon. Yeah, I still think Amazon's not priced correctly. Say again? I still think Amazon's not priced correctly. You mean it should be repriced higher? Mm-hmm. Yep. Anything on that? I still think it's it's being viewed as just as just an e-commerce uh, online retailer. I don't think that there's been enough consideration for the uh, it's, it's AI cloud uh, market share, which they have the majority of. Uh, that I think I think there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot not being considered with that company on the uh, the, the AI space. I was just gonna say, I was that's kind of what I was gonna ask you. I'm glad that you said that. Don't you think that there might be kind of a lag effect with some of their web services that mm -hmm. that they could really kind of boom if this AI continues to proliferate the way that they're talking about? I mean, for me, Amazon seems like a no brainer, you know. And that, and that's, you know, in addition to actually loving just the service itself, whether, you know, it's Prime or Prime Video or whatever, part of that that you end up liking, I use them all. I use them all. I, I got to think Amazon's going to be one of those kind of quieter, silent AI plays, the thing behind the thing, if you will. Okay, so uh, something's got into the market because we are really ripping right now. You're put a bottom in in pre market. Tech, and it's been up ever since. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say tech and the spy, those ripping to the upside here. The Dow's still holding that level lower, not really participating yet, but tech really going here. Lulu looks like this actually might break lower as well, by the way. Lunar with that rejection of uh, 660 going lower, now down to VWAP, a little bit beneath it. In my, uh, I just my pulled broker. right back to VWAP. Yep. Yep. Uh, ESPR not able to get above the 65 EMA on the five minute, going lower towards VWAP. Looks like MLGO, MicroAlgo, still trying to make its way back up to VWAP. Yeah, we'll see if that ends up bouncing here. Uh, Robert taking Reddit. Let's take a look here at Reddit. Reddit, are you taking it which way? Reddit popping here, by the way, looking for that 52 move here on Reddit. MSTR getting mentioned here. Good to see a Wayne. MSTR continuing to move up here. Uh, that chart that you showed me that showed how many Bitcoin MicroStrategy actually owns in comparison to some of the other companies, that was eye-opening. Really, yeah. really, really, it, really good stuff on that. And that was, I don't know if that how much of that has really changed uh, since last month when that was created, but I thought it was absolutely... Yeah, like you said, eye-opening about yeah. just how much Tesla still owns. And it just gives you an like it, 
an ability to kind of judge the scale, right? And mm -hmm. how many, and when you get this huge move in Bitcoin, obviously that's going to affect some of the other ones. MSTR here, this has been a beast. Uh, Robert, you said you're out at Reddit at 52. Oh, I'm taking, I see you're taking gains at 52. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, dude, register ring for you, Robert. Let's go. Yeah, GME, by the way, uh, looking like th this came back to its VWAP breaking down a little bit here. Uh oh, got another feed issue. Oh, there we go. Uh, GME breaking out of that consolidation area here. Look for this to come in lower here on GME. We'll see what those earnings do. That earnings could kick something off tomorrow. So Lucid holding uh, above three for the moment. NLGO looks like it's still trying to get back up to BWAP. ESPR still not able to get over the 65 BMA on the five minute. But CLSK, have no fear, is still trying to push higher. Ripping. Yeah. Ripping to the upside, CLSK. Absolutely. And I actually, you know, it's, I gotta, I gotta, I never saw that on the scanner here. I wonder why CLSK being omitted. Off to um, oh, yeah. I mean, if it's not in the scanner right now, I, yeah, I'd be kind of wondering why it's 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 only up 13 and a half percent compared to some of these other ones. That's that's a little bit on the, the lower side. Um, but, you know, whenever whenever Bitcoin starts these runs, it's always it's always this one. Yeah. MSTR, Riot, Mara. Those are the, the you know, the, the big ones I start to look at first. See what they're doing. Funky cold stocks. Um, what do you use for the super dom for trade the pool? I'm still familiarizing with the platform. So the super dom is this. La I actually call this a ladder. That's what you're seeing over here on the left hand side of the screen. What, what do you use for the super dom? I think I just use the stock settings, don't I? Um, I guess you can customize some of the buttons here. But basically, the reason for me using this, let me know if this is helpful. The reason for me using this is I can actually see the level two where the price is at and the orders kind of just in one like holistic view. And it actually allows me to place orders right from here. So this to me is is something that I've actually been doing in Thinkorswim since I opened my account um, with Thinkorswim years ago. And so this is a very, very similar tool. So I just Kind of felt comfortable using it um i call it the price ladder but i guess it's actual name here is the super dom let me know if that <laughs> let me know if you had a more specific question that i can answer for you crow mentioning a lab a l a b that was a recent ipo now weren't we talking about this one in happy hour this also has some time intel's invested in these guys so intel should make more money if a lab does better something like that um, maybe I, I don't think I wrote this one down. Uh, wow. Insider, uh, trading though. Last, uh, last week they, they had some, uh, insider buys. It's usually a good sign. Uh, ESPR trying to push, uh, up to that, uh, 265 level again. It really wants to get through there. Uh, you got it, Funky Cold. Hopefully that was helpful there for you. Jonathan mentioning, Ryan, think MSTR price now with Bitcoin at 70K. Kathy Wood is calling for Bitcoin to be at 1 million by 2030. Do the math. So you're right here on this. Here's one of the things that I'll say about the Bitcoin price targets. Um, since I first found out about Bitcoin, I've been hearing price targets. So they've been A lot of them have been very grandiose. There's a lot of back and forth. The, I've had my I've been asked and had my own price targets, some of which hit others, which never even got close. I am more in this for kind of like the the long term, right? It, I, if it goes to if Bitcoin price goes to a million, great. I don't know if that's going to happen. I can't say for sure if that's going to happen. So I don't, you know, I can't just be like, well, I'm invested because Kathy's invested. That that doesn't make sense for me either. Um, but if that happens. The math will be looking pretty nice by then. I'll tell you that much. That would be pretty damn good. Yeah, Jay Diamond saying Bitcoin to a trillion. Why not? That's kind of the thing. Like you know, <laughs> people throw around Bitcoin price targets all the time. I can't make heads or tails of that. You know, can't can't really make heads or tails of that. One one thing that's been interesting uh, lately has um, has been how uh, a lot of Chinese nationals have been 
unable to pull money out of their bank accounts. There's, I, I, we've, we've talked a lot about how uh, it's, it's not really going great for the consumer or the average citizen over there. Uh, they've been trying to uh, put, they've been putting money in Bitcoin so they can protect themselves from bank runs over in China. So that's just uh, some of the news that I've been, uh, been reading. Uh, hey, there, a lot, a lot of wild stuff going on over there in China. Oh, yeah. so, all right. Folks, it is Monday. You know what that means. We have special guest Matt Malley joining us for his outlook on the market. Let's go ahead and bring him on. Matt, how are you doing today? Good. I'm good, Ryan. I apologize. I'm a little uh, late here getting on. I apologize. It's got a little crazy this morning, which can happen on Monday morning sometimes. Hey, look, it is a Monday. I don't hold that against anybody. We kept the seat warm for you, so no problem at all. Uh, hopefully you had a great weekend. What are you seeing early on here? I know we got a lot of news here. The Boeing CEO leaving. We got the market that's actually trading up here. What are you seeing today? Yeah, that uh, news about Boeing. I, you know, I think people were. I mean, we're, we're assuming this would happen, especially after some of the things that were going on last week. And there, there was some rumors around about this. Um, the one thing I, I worry about. I mean, this is giving the stock a nice technical bounce because it was getting quite oversold. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're still in, a, in, in. You know. Who are they going to hire? I mean, they're in limbo right now. All of their top management is basically going to leave, but they haven't been replaced and aren't, don't seem to be like they're going to be replaced uh, for at least several months. So, uh, And it does look like the uh, CEO of GE, which a lot of people would think would be a great person to turn this company around, doesn't seem to be interested, at least from my hearing, hearing around the street. So a little worried about that. Yeah, so that it's. I'm glad that you brought that up because one of the discussions that 13 and I had here this morning was it really matters on a company like Boeing. It really matters who you find to replace the CEO. One of the things we were speculating on is what does it mean that he's going to stay around till the end of the year? I guess you can speculate on that, but I'm with you. It really matters who they bring in uh, to to fill that role. What do you make of the GE CEO not being interested at all? Does that give you any pause or anything? Well, uh, well, to a certain degree. I mean, the one thing we do need to know is that that, that Boeing, of course, at some point is going to be a great buy because, uh, I mean, they're 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 you know, they say they're too big to fail. They're too important not to succeed. I mean, we, we only have two airline manufacturers in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, number one, number two, they're also important for our uh, in in our defense budget. They're a defense manufacturer, uh, so they're they're going to survive. Uh, the question is, uh, how long is going to take? They brought in uh, Calhoun, who didn't wasn't able to turn things around. In fact, things got got worse. Uh, yeah. So they're going to need to bring in a good turnaround candidate for that buy that that great buying opportunity to come sooner rather than later. Because if it's not a good one, as you say, it's going to be. I mean, this thing could wallow away for for several years. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm I'm with you in terms of the long term plan. I really think at some point Boeing is going to be a really good buy. I'm not in it right now. Um, so I'm just kind of waiting for it to tell me that level. Matt, some of the other news that we got here was that uh, China was not going to allow some U.S. chips. It looks like Intel being hit a little bit on that news here this morning, although Intel is up off the lows. You have anything for, for that in terms of what this looks like going forward? Well, on a very short term, it's kind of funny. On a very short term basis, um, is you know for for AMD and Intel, uh, Advanced Micro and Intel, this is negative news on an intermediate term basis and a very short term basis. Obviously, today the stocks are down. The one thing I'm wondering though is we get towards the end of the week, and some people have been asking me, "Hey, should I be buying puts in AMD or Intel right here?" I mean, got to be careful here because Thursday is the last day of the quarter, uh, last trading day of the quarter, and it's been a great quarter for these semiconductor stocks. And you know that window dressing where these uh, uh, institutional uh, investors come in and start. By you know, pushing up their their favorite stocks and their favorite groups, especially in a, when a quarter has been a very good one, so you may see these things bounce back a little bit later in the week. So be careful about making negative bets. However, as if we do get that big push, it may be something where people want to look at uh, making a negative bet at the end of this week or early next week, because this is definitely something that, uh, uh, especially for Advanced Micro, which really became expensive, really became overbought. It's worked off some of that, but uh, uh, this stock is, is quite extended, and I, I think we'll, we'll see some more downside, but be careful about making a negative bet uh, this week. And do you think that that could kind of bleed into Apple? I know we've we've already kind of been looking at Apple's reports that it looks like iPhone sales slowing down in China. Do you think that could spell another negative leg for a stock like Apple, which is already under some pressure? 
Yeah, I mean, one of the things, you know, the stock got a little oversold on a near-term basis, but it's not oversold on, a, on an intermediate-term basis. And, uh, you know, they're definitely facing a, a, a problem. They, they were already facing some problems. And, uh, you know, we knew this uh, lawsuit from the uh, Justice Department was coming, uh, but it's wide-ranging, and uh, it's something they're going to have to fight for a long time. And, you know, the thing is, their sales and their revenues are down. I mean, they're, they're, they're trending down. Nobody's worried about this company going out of business or that the yeah. stock's going to drop 50% or 90%, but the, the downside. In fact, we bought some puts uh, in our chat room here, the Benzinga chat room, uh, mm -hmm. for uh, late last week on Friday after that bounce and, and sold part of them today for up 75% and, and uh, holding on to a, for a few runners here to see if they can uh, move a little bit higher. Okay, so awesome. Means, the, the puts, puts will move higher, the stock will move lower. Yeah, no, and and I, I love that too because I'm with you. I, I mean, I don't think Apple, I don't think things are really changing here. It's going through some short-term uh, turmoil. I love that you're actually using puts in order to capture that but still maintaining a different longer-term perspective on Apple. I know both of us here, um, Joe and, and myself, we're actually looking for Apple to come in. We'd love for this to maybe come in 165, 160 and get another opportunity to load up to the long side there or maybe even play some options with that so um yeah that that sounds good too okay um you got anything else that you're kind of just looking at for the week i know we've got good friday coming up here this week so uh a little bit of a, of a shortened week you got any outlook or things to be prepared for things to keep your eye on yeah the one thing i'm, I'm a little bit worried about on a very near-term basis uh is uh th these the gr groups i've been very bullish on the gold miners the uh the energy stocks mm -hmm. uh, and even bitcoin bitcoin of course has come down a little bit um, but it was very, the, all of these are very overbought on a near term basis. So I'm certainly not saying sell the energy stocks. I still like them very much. Okay. Uh, same with the gold miners. Uh, but you don't want to be chasing them here. I think they'll come back a little bit. And, and so, you know, later this week, early next week, you got, I think we'll provide another great opportunity to buy. So love them longer term, but, but, but don't chase them. And the only other last thing I just say is that we're starting to hear this thing around Wall Street and something I've been talking about for a while is this whole thing about earnings. And JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley came out and said the same thing this weekend that, that I've been saying for a while now is that remember earnings are not up. They're up for a few small, uh, a, sm a small number of big cap tech names, but the overall uh, 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 earnings estimates for 2024 have actually come down slightly. Okay. And they haven't gone up at all for 2025. So, you know, multiples, there's a reason multiples have shot up. Okay. It's because earnings mm -hmm. haven't approved. I mean, as these stocks have moved higher. So, you know, we just have to be a little bit careful here. Once we get past the end of the quarter, uh, you know, we might see a bit of a pullback. And remember, springtime is, a, you know, even in election years, it almost are, are tend to be higher. Uh, they do see corrections sometimes or at least pullbacks. And that does usually happen in the springtime. So be a little bit careful about chasing, you know, assuming this market is just going to go up in a straight line, even though, uh, you know, Chairman Powell certainly made some dovish co uh, comments last week. I still think we could be in for a little bit of a, a, rougher, a rougher ride in, in the near term. Yeah, and I'm actually expecting kind of a rougher ride in the near term too. But to be quite honest with you, I've been expecting that from the beginning of the year and it just has not materialized yet. So I guess we'll keep waiting and we'll see when that ends up materializing. Um, Matt, can't thank you enough for your market update. Really appreciate you folks. If you want to follow Matt and all of the things that he's looking at, head on over to the Benzinga research site. Matt does a great job for us. Matt, cannot uh, thank you enough for taking time out of your morning here this morning. Great. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. All right. Take care of yourself. Really appreciate our guy, Matt Malley, coming on and giving you his perspective. What do you think about that, 13? You uh, making any adjustments to your trading plan based on that? I, I think for me, my uh, plan is still going to be uh, the same. I do want to have a, sh a shopping list I put together for when we do get uh, a mm -hmm. corrective move. And uh, if he's anticipating uh, that we're going to see some downside, I think a lot of us are anticipating we're going to see some downside uh, after this uh, first quarter, closer to the time that we get uh, you know, people paying for taxes and um, having to, you know, sometimes they'll have to sell stocks in order to do that. Uh, I think uh, we'll, we'll get the downside that might uh, be a good time to start looking at some of these really beat up names that are still strong companies and uh, start, uh, you know, building a position in those. Okay. We will keep an eye on all that. I'm all for adding strong companies on weakness. That is mm -hmm. a core tenet of my investing principle. Anytime that we get an opportunity to do that, we will absolutely take into that or take a look at that. Okay, folks, I am trying to roll through some of the smaller stocks that you folks were keeping your eye on while we were having our discussion here with Matt Malley. Um, looks like OCGN is one that's being mentioned here that continuing to push above two, looking pretty good on that one. CYT. 
ITO, another one I'm seeing the chat mentioned here that was on our gapper list. That has been unable to get above VWAP here yet. And then, of course, ESPR, this kind of right back to building above the VWAP, unable to really have an impulse move. 13, what else did I miss while we were doing that? I, uh, you know, I was just looking at ESPR because it uh, it looks like it really wants to get over the 65 EMA that it's trying to push up through right now, and I have uh, the the price it needs to break out of uh, at about uh, 265, which is just slightly above it. So um, if we can do that, then uh, we'll you know might might see some uh, more upside here. But there's a lot of consolidation from the pre market above that level, so I'm just not ho really sure how high this goes. Maybe 275 before we start getting some. Uh, some resistance and there we go we're, we're breaking out of that 65 ema right now there all you had to do was talk about it 13 you lit that fire and bang <laughs> here we go we will see where we end up going here espr uh yeah humble ninja that's you know not bad i've i've i would love to get a list together with uh with everybody and uh you know kind of get some ideas about what we want to uh be owning for a good uh good period of time uh on a pullback one of the things that uh that I'd like to see come in a little bit is a um, an interesting ETF that I, I'm going to uh, end up holding for quite some time. Um, you can take a look at it if you want for now, but it's a JQUA. Uh, JQUA. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm at, so while you explain this here real quick, I'm actually going to step away. Just one sec. I'll be RB. Okay. So this is uh, this is similar to uh, the Qs, but it's um, it's not heavily weighted in in some of those tech names like nvidia so when it uh, that does pull back it's not going to be a, a violent uh you know downside move this is a a lot of quality stocks in here it's uh um just an etf that I, i'm gonna uh you know want to hold for a good period of time especially for ex expecting the uh the spy and uh the broader market to continue uh, going up uh, so this is one and i would take a look at the metrics there's a lot to get into with this one but uh, that i'm not going to really discuss here right now uh, but uh, this is, I, I like this uh, ETF. I already own it and uh, I'm going to be adding to it when, if I get uh, a better opportunity to add some more. That's, uh, that's kind of what I'm getting at. We can, we can discuss this another time, but take a look at this, do some research on that ETF. I think it's uh, top quality. NVIDIA and CMG is on your list. MLGO is possible. Uh, let's take a look at MLGO and see what's going on here. Okay, so it's, so it seems to have sort of found a base um it's a 463 and it's trying to come back up uh to be wet it, it looks like it's curling so possible yeah ocgn knife oh the crow you like that uh the etf you know take scrutinize the heck out of it and let me know what you think i'm totally down to uh see if you can give me some uh uh bad news with that because you know that just makes the, the everybody's case stronger if you can poke holes in my theory uh on some of these things then that just you know that just that it's that's good because that, that means I can uh, if you can't poke holes in it that's a good a strong theory but if you can then I can improve on uh, on that by finding something else or not taking such a large position. That is a best practice that we do on the Happy Hour Show all of the time. More information, more better, as I always say. <laughs> so when we have a thesis. Let's do as much as we can to poke holes in it and reach a better conclusion. I'm with you 100. percent yeah, ESPR came right up to uh, some of that uh, pre-market resistance and got rejected. It's right about at uh, two, or between two sixty-eight and two seventy, about two sixty-eight. SGMT says smoke tuna. Let's take a look at that one. Smoke tuna been on them. SGMT making a run back towards its view app. Oh, they had earnings. Oh, GRWG. So this is another one of those pot names that we talked about, 13. This one actually doing a good job holding some of those gains. I know we talked about some of those coming back in like CGC. Uh, let's see, FLGC, that actually came back in too. GRWG, interestingly enough, this your best performer here to the day. This up near highs, 265 intraday. Or actually, no, it was actually a little bit higher than that. Nope, nope, it was 265 exactly, a little bit of size there. So up right near those highs on grwg lion mentioning that coin is ripping again so coin this has done nothing but trade up here today coin moving with bitcoin uh as well i know uh, matt when he was on here saying bitcoin was down a little bit it had it was ripping literally while we were talking but it has pulled back from those highs also by the way uh looking at the oil 
the futures chart here. Oil 82, that also at the highs here. I love this pattern with uh, Bitcoin, how it uh, just consolidated at the 67, um, yeah, 67,000 uh, level, just kind of trading around that for, gosh, since yesterday. And then we just have this uh, breakout all the way up to back to uh, 69,000. The next level I have, well, actually, that's the uh, previous all-time high. Um, let me see where that recent high was put in. Do you remember what that number was? For which one? For Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I have, actually have to look at a chart here. Uh, Kalu, uh, tone it down on the caps, please, my man. Uh, keep your tickers in caps. Also, <laughs> my name is not a ticker, <laughs> but I love that you cash tagged <laughs> my name. Honestly, that actually is making me uh, making me laugh here. Try to keep only the tickers in caps. It is much easier for us to see that. Um, okay, let's take a look here. Um, but by I'm the way, why Ryan is uh, Ryan Specialty Holdings? Uh, I thought I'm not it, sure what you're seeing here, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's not Ryan Air. I thought it was that Ryan Specialty Holdings. I wonder what that is. Maybe I should look into that. Insurance. <laughs> oh, that's not a business I wanted to be involved in. <laughs> anyway, okay, okay, okay. I digress. I digress. Um, the chart we were taking a look at here on Pro. Um, what were we just going to pull up here, 13? Gosh, I got the, the memory Bitcoin. of the goldfish. Bitcoin, thank you, for heaven's sake. I'm like, coin? No, it's not coin. We were just talking. No, 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 it's Bitcoin. Here is the Bitcoin chart. Let me bring this up here real fast. So here is your, oops, uh, I did the wrong one. Here you go. That recent high here, I've got that at just about 74K here on Bitcoin. That's what you were asking for, right? That recent one, that recent all-time high? Yeah, yeah, the one that I have here on my broker is 74. 3,826. Yep. So we so, are, we, we are just about, about in the yeah. same one. Yeah. We are, we are just about uh, the same on those levels here. Look at this. Yeah. So uh, if, you know, if not 70,000, then, then afterwards we have that, uh, that all time high that we have as uh, the next level for Bitcoin. So cooler penny uh, stock moving. Oh, I know about this one. Oh God. We've, we've looked and traded that one. Plenty of times. Donated plenty of money to the Cooler Fund, I'm sorry to say. What is going on with this one today? What's Lack doing? They sold. <laughs> Timothy Ray sells almost a million shares. Actually, uh, Lack here, this had a, a pretty decent last week. Let's see if this can actually break on the daily here on Lack. I know it's pulling back a little bit here today, but pushed right up on the daily chart. Actually, let me take a better look oh, at that daily chart here. The crow, you're yep. saying it's just a continuation from the uh, news on Thursday? Because I remember it moving. I remember seeing this uh, move on, on Thursday or Friday. Uh, so it's just continuation is what you're saying? And here, by the way, here's that formation on LAC. Would love to see this high get taken out here. So high of this candle here is going to be 765. Today, we did 741. Let's see if that 765 test can come here and break on ticker LAC. This is Lithium of America. I took calls on this last week for a swing. We talked about, took that small though. Let me go back to trade the pool here. Here is SYM Lion. This is up and actually holding above the VWAP here on symbi Symbotic. Let's call it symbiotic. And Boeing, by the way, we talked about that here. This actually looked like this might roll over to the lows. So that new CEO, and look at this, 13. Took my eye off the prize. Broke the bottom end of that range. Came back up and tested it. Now we move lower. I'm going to be upset if this finishes lower here. And I just simply missed it because we were scaling through some other stuff there. Boeing, this setup, pretty decent here. We'll see where Boeing ends up. Yeah, uh, I still want this to go lower. Yeah, I think really, as far as Boeing goes, as long as it holds this double bottom here that we have at like, what, 177-ish? Mm -hmm. Probably going to be all right there. If you guys did buy, uh, buy the CGC now, okay, hold on a second. Yep, that one's tough. SGMT here, this popping back to the VWAP. Let's see if we can get above. Remember, every time SGMT so far has popped back to that VWAP, we've ended up staying below it. Nice looking green volume candle here. SGMT. Good call, Tuna. Let's continue to watch for that one. 
uh, who said that? Uh, Kalu, uh, you know, just in my opinion, because um, I'm looking at a, a five minute chart, it seems like this is a, a spot where it would probably get sold. Uh, I would say that there's some, it looks like it's going to have some downside ahead under six. That's just what I'm seeing. CGC right at that VWAP here. Market Sniper was talking about Wolf to WULF earlier. Wolf coming back into that VWAP. Um, uh, VKTX, man. That was that was a bummer that I got stopped out of that. I was on this move lower here through 70. I wasn't going to give up 70. 70.19 to make it an even three-point trade there, but I might have to buy this one back 13. I might have to wait for a down day here, hold my nose and buy on this one. We'll see. I'll let you know. Crow, uh, are you still watching uh, MNY? Uh, that one looks like it's trying to put in a bull pennant right now. Sure is. This Holding is the speed up here. Uh, what else? Looks like uh, Clean uh, Clean Spark could uh, also go higher. Maybe it's starting to roll over, but it looks like it uh, it's it, it's getting some support about mm, twenty one eighty. What else? Micro algo still not recovering. I'm not sure about this one. Doesn't mean it can't uh, recover later. All the Reddit traders, um, are you done for today? Or are you just uh, waiting for the next move up? Are you asking me? I, I was just oh, no. asking no, all sorry. the Reddit traders. I just noticed that Sal, uh, Sal is talking at, about that. Yeah, where did we end up stopping here on that last Reddit move? 52. Okay. 26. Okay, now we're tr coming back into VWAP. Okay. Yep, yep. I'm just looking around, see what else is uh, going here. Yeah, those uh, miners, as they were uh, the Bitcoin miners, as was just being mentioned, those are coming down. You got filled at 182. Okay, uh, that was on uh, MNY. Oh wow. Okay, so you, you're already doing really well. Great job. Smoke Tuna says, looks like the market is a bear party. Bulls are all drunk. Maybe it's hung over from the basketball tournament that they had too much fun at this weekend. You never know. You never know. Absolutely love you folks being ready to go, though. Smash up the like for our community, which does an awesome job finding stuff every single day. You love to see it. SGMT popping again, Tuna. This one, oh, yeah. this time above the VWAP. Yes, sir. Uh, lucid uh, down to where I think it could potentially bounce. It's it's pretty close to there, um, so I'd be looking for lucid to to find a bottom relatively soon here. Look at that man! That that ju that just traded back up, shook me out, gave us the move that we were looking for. I tell you what, thirteen. This setup still. Still money. I'm going to be looking for this every single day. And I'm going to expand the range, the price range of the stocks that we're looking at. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That's see, good stuff. I mean, when you, when you look at, uh, when you look at a smaller time frame and you start looking at the previous days, we're coming down to where those previous days highs were. So this is, we're coming down to where it could get some support. That's why I feel like this level here that we're close to is pretty interesting. Which stock? Sorry, I missed this it again. Is this is lucid. lucid. Okay, the so, stock so was still on. Yeah, we good. Yeah. We good. We good, fam. Yeah, so you could like just look at the price action over the past over the what last week, and uh, you could see that two eighty nine, about two eighty nine, uh, two eighty eight to two ninety, where we've been talking, where I've been talking about this whole morning. Looks like it could be one of the uh, earliest spots uh, for support. Uh, some pretty big size sitting on that 290 offer, by the way. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's if it can if it can hold here. Computer. 
Crow, you still going? You still going with MNY? Because that thing's looking like it's it's wanting more that than two. That start moving. That was just yeah, it sure did. Here we go, pushing away from that VWAP now. Let's see if those mm -hmm. highs get taken out. Yeah, it looks like CLSK is trying to recover. So what is Bitcoin doing? Bitcoin moving away uh, up and away from sixty nine thousand. Just have to watch and see if it can continue to do that. CGC, yeah, it's still looking like that one's going to head down. Looking around here, huge reversal in wind, Costco down. Amazon reversed off those highs that we were looking at earlier, although Amazon's still pretty strong here today. That's not Amazon's ticker, AMZN. Why did it give a different letter? Got about 15 minutes left for yep. us here today on a Monday. Stick around, though. We are going to be sending you to Trader Bacon right after us today. No need yep. to do anything. We will properly redirect you, but we still got 15 minutes to go here at 13. Uh, nice job uh, with the MNY Crow. Uh, I also saw Smoke Tuna was mentioning MLGO just as I was looking at it. Yes, it does look like that is curling right now. This one uh, just needs to get more volume expansion, and we could be moving back up over VWAP. So look at DWAC here. This is getting mentioned in the chat. This drifted back above its VWAP. After that knife, we really didn't break the pre-market or the after-hours level here. We've kind of drifted back up on DWAC. This is not over yet. Sally, good morning. Sally mentioning OPRA. Sally, I know you've been here all morning. I just didn't get a chance to say it earlier. OPRA popping here out of that uh, kind of that sideways area here on good volume too. On OPRA, let me just check and confirm that there was no recent news that I might have missed. No, I don't see anything fresh in here. So OPRA looks like a nice little volume pop there. Spot. NVFY. Let's take a look at that. All right, Kalu, do... Uh... Protect yourself as best you can, and, and good luck with your trade. Uh, MNY, we broke Ooh. two. This thing looks like it could go higher. MNY, got to win there. Let's ring that register. Only up from here, my man. Good stuff there. It does look like it could make a little bit more. MNY, right at two. And there it is. Now we're getting more highs. Good stuff. Sounds like you folks are doing pretty well this morning. Sounds like we took up and grabbed or woke up and grabbed Monday by the horns. That's what it sounds like here to me. I'm, I expect nothing less from our amazing community. Expect nothing less, 13. Yes, <laughs> ESPR. Uh, didn't get a close above that uh, 65 uh, EMA on the five minute, but it's trying mm -hmm. to test it again. Uh, at this time, if we do get a rejection, I think that we are going back to, uh, to under VWAP if, if uh, we can't get a close there. Uh, that's just kind of what I'm seeing with this one at the moment. Yeah, uh, that's so random. So you, it's not just you. Uh, it's not just you. That was something that I was struggling with too, trying to scalp some of these smaller stocks. I kept getting flushed out of them. And then even on the Lucid one here today, this thesis worked out almost perfectly. It just that rebound ended up shaking me out. And instead of closing the position, it should have actually added short there a little bit. Um, and this would have worked out too. So you know what? We just take the data that we get. We alter our plan. We put one foot in front of the next. And tomorrow is a new day. Key here is making sure that you never put yourself in a position where you wipe yourself out. That way you can stomach downturns. And we all have them. ESPR with that break above the 65 EMA and how to see if it can close above it. If we do, then there, that uh, gives me more hope for more upside. It's just that we got that consolidation from the, uh, the pre-market that it's got to uh, make its way through from about uh, where, where the price is to uh, about uh, 280, we'll call it 285. Uh, real quick here, Johnny GME Squeeze. What a YouTube handle. You really knocked it out of the park here. We actually <laughs> talked a little bit about GME earlier. Nice impulse move ahead of earnings here. 
came back through the VWAP, but has now traded back to that VWAP. Not sure that there's a squeeze going here yet, uh, but GME definitely been active today, finding some resistance here at its VWAP. There's the poll in MNY. CLSK, it's been trying to move back up but not making new highs yet. MLGO still hasn't been able to get back up uh, from that curling action. And ESPR, coming back in a little bit towards the 65 EMA. If we cannot close above this in the next 10 seconds, I'd be worried. 10 seconds. By the way, Dow at the lows here. NASDAQ looking like it's a little bit weak. Spy off the highs as well. Feature updated. Let's go. I don't know what it said there, but that robot sounds like it was Skynet taking over. <laughs> I watched that uh, those movies recently, and I'm just like, wow. Some of the things that we were just calling, you know, movie magic is actually happening. It's kind of crazy. Here we go. Come on, Clean Spark. Let's go. CLSK. Mm-hmm. We got to close with ESPR above that 65 EMA now to hold it and make its way up through that, uh, that consolidation from this morning. CLSK 2267, your intraday high there on CLSK. Looks like Lucid's starting to come back off of the uh, that zone that I was talking about that uh, where it could have bottomed uh, to uh, 88 to 290. That's where it's found support coming back up at the moment. Looks like FLGC is pretty much done, probably until about... Market maybe. Sniper saying all these robots are freaking me out. Looks like your text <laughs> message sound is getting to them. Starting to wear on them. All right, then we'll just take I'm this just, comment. I'm, no, 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 I'm, I'm joke. I throw joke. Throw it over there. I joke. <laughs> they really just throw... Everyone wants to throw their phone. That's hilarious if you actually just did that. I Yeah, but I have an outer box, so... Oh, okay, think. so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What do y'all use to protect your phone? I'm sure sure some of you use screen protectors or I use I I use and have been using for the last several iterations here Spigen brand cases. Uh, I'm not sponsored. They I like them because they're durable. They they offer like really good protection, but they're thin. They're not too bulky. It doesn't feel like I'm my phone is becoming effectively a laptop. Other cool thing about the Spigen case, at least for the Galaxy S24, is it's got this little kickstand in the back here. Oh, yeah. People so like that. this makes it really easy to set it on a table and watch videos. Shout out to this little kickstand on airplanes. Huge, huge, awesome. Just to put it right there on the tray table. A lot of airplanes have that thing where you can just pop the phone in there, but uh, kickstand gives you a little bit more. So that the cases aren't very expensive. Actually, I think under 20 bucks or something like that, right around there. Good stuff. I'll have to look at those for yep. the, whenever I get the next phone. Okay, so ESPR. Slow, Crassy knows what's up. Let's go, dude. <laughs> ES, ESPR uh, still trying to make its way up to that uh, consolidation area. Uh, MNY looks like that one's uh, that one's going to be coming down a bit. Um, not sure how far down or if it's going to recover. ESPR here actually may be a breakout of this flag formation. AC2000, I agree with you. I have one. See, that's what I'm saying. I, I think that these cases, I think there's more of a fan base than you think of for these cases here. And there's no, no, no. Go ahead. Sorry. Smoke Tuna making a, uh, an announcement about OCGN uh, coming back. That looks like it wants to recover. Uh, still above that uh, breakout level. So that's good news. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, you, no, 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 no. I, I, was, I was just saying, and, you know, I'm not. I, I think I like a lot of different phone cases. I love those outer boxes, but I was just looking for something specific. Yeah, my outer box does not have a kickstand. I really don't yeah. know if I'd use it that much anyway. Yeah, Johan saying I use a spig in case too. Um, the, you know, here here's the other thing. So uh, X sniper here. Oh, no, wait, that was about very. We'll take a look at that here. Um <laughs> the stupid idiot is this guy's YouTube handle. I don't think you're stupid or an idiot for whatever that's worth. I just you're. I think you're funny. I think you're hysterical <laughs> is what I think. I use Apple's genuine leather case, expensive but really nice, no screen protector. So interesting thing here: those screen protectors 
I started using those. I'll be honest. I just don't, I don't like them. I, I give me the Sapphire crystal screen or whatever that's anti scratch resistant. And I'll take my chances with that. I don't care for screen protectors, especially on the phones that have kind of like a curved screen or with those edges that are curved, like they are in the galaxy. I don't care for them. So I'm with you on this one. And as far as leather uh, products go, I actually have a Waterfield designs leather sleeve for my MacBook. I think leather products are awesome. But for the phone, I just wanted that plastic. It's more of a pocket thing. But that's interesting nonetheless. CLSK, we're getting close to uh, intraday highs, new intraday highs. So I'm going to write back up to that spot on CLSK. Lulu, which, by the way, was holding in there. This actually looks like this might retest the lows from last Friday on Lulu. Lynn asking if there's three minute candles in pro. I think you can no, set those there up. Isn't. There's there, okay. there isn't. No, because the trading view chart only offers one, two, or five. This mm. is part because I'm so used to that. This is part of the reason I had never used those three minute candles. But this is what I'll say. I am not a fan. I'm a fan of having charts set up differently on different platforms. Like I use a 15 and a daily and a five, and then I use a one, a three, and an hourly or a four hourly. So I would say you probably have some type of either broker or charting software that will allow you to do that. Don't fret that it's not in pro. It's not in pro. I still use it here and trade the pool and in my broker with no issue at all. So um, I, I'm a big fan of trying out different time ranges. No, it is not in pro. CYTO, thinking that's done for the day here on CYTO. Braden back down from its VWAP here. As we're asking about Very, we talked about this one earlier here. I'm back to its VWAP here on Very. MNY might be finding support here. Something for y'all to watch. MLGO still not able to get away from this uh, this bottoming. Yeah, this, this has really just stayed on the bottom 13. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if it can't, if it can't, uh, you know, get out of this uh, this consolidation soon, it's going to, it's probably going to go down. I ran right to these highs here. We'll see on I ran five sixty. If that snaps, that could go on I R E N. Lunar after that uh, six sixty rejection, just continuing to go lower. Uh, probably going to go down to the pre market lows where it's uh, six twelve. Yeah, MLGO is starting to break down. I was mentioning Tesla. Ooh, Tesla came all the way back in from those highs there. Yeah, lots of things uh, come back yeah. in. How about NVIDIA and SMCI? Did those ever come back in? NVIDIA a little bit. SMCI barely at all. Those things still holding us up here. Apple actually looks like this is trying to come up off the lows for another leg that's coming out of its bear flag here. Marcus Sniper mentioning M-A-I-A. M-A-I-A? Mm-hmm. Here we go. This is, yeah, this on moving on volume here. Good spot there. Yeah. Don't have any levels for this one. Let's see. No, me either. And that's on the scanner here, too. Great pickup. Mm-hmm. Great pickup. Uh, probably say 325 is the next level I, I have. And then after that. I'd say 395. All right, let's see. Are we getting a uh, recovery in M and Y? Not completely, but it's you know not going lower, so there's there's good news. Yeah, a lot of these are just kind of turning around. Not a whole lot. Looks like it kind of died out again, right? A little, a little bit, which is fine, you know, because. Yeah. You know. And where are we at spy wise on that volume? Let's check where we're at. I, it's early in the day. We're not even going to be close, but I'm just wondering. 10 million shares post to open, our post to open here. Okay. So, kind of what we've been seeing lately. 
Yeah, yeah. Jay, Jay saying very tough market. Meta, Microsoft, Google, Apple, all red. Uh, AMD now green. SMCI and Nvidia are the leaders still. You know, look if it's difficult, dial it back. Right, no reason to force things if you don't have a read on it. Um, uh, Kalu, you know, but I think that's that's kind of what I was uh, getting at today uh, with with uh, the company because they're 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 supposed to uh, merge today. And if if Trump sells all his shares, then it's going to go down. But if he is able to find uh, you know another 500 millions elsewhere, or if he already has it, uh, then yeah, that DWAC could go higher because then there's gonna be more confidence. Like, oh, okay, well he doesn't need to pull money out of uh, out of the stock. So yeah, I could I could I could see that happening. All right, thirteen. We are pretty much out of time here. You got any closing words for the group here? Well, you guys did really good this morning. I think uh, you guys are awesome. Keep it up. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And just to protect that capital. Yeah, I think this is that's really good advice. Day like today, if you don't have it rolling for you, if the things that you're looking for aren't materializing to the things that you had planned out, keep it on the sidelines. Tomorrow is a new day. Protect your capital. We will be back right now. We are going to send you over to Trader Bacon 13. Take care of yourself. We will see you, my man. See you later. And see all of you folks here tomorrow. Take care and enjoy trading.